huge day in the world of NASCAR. They released multiple announcements, releasing the remainder of the 2020 schedule, bringing back the Choose Cone to the series, announcing a very confusing and unnecessary and stupid starting lineup formula, and we might, might have a possibility on the fate of Eric Jones at JGR. Yo, what is up everyone? My name is Jack Cross and welcome back to the episode of Inside the Lines. We're only going to be talking about NASCAR here today. I know there are a couple news about Formula One, uh, like for example, uh, Valtteri Bottas is sign signing an extension with Mercedes, but that's eh, not that important. important. We're going to stick to the world of NASCAR because like I said in the intro, they announced a bunch of of things regarding the remainder of the 2020 schedule and season and procedures and we also might have an idea on Eric Jones's fate at JGR but well, let's start off with the schedule earlier today the remainder of the 2020 schedule was just released starting from September 5th all the way to the season finale at Phoenix on November 8th so let's go over race by race it'll be for the first time since 2011 we will see trucks at Darlington and it's gonna be one of two races on that Sunday as later at night at 6 p.m. the start of the NASCAR playoffs the Southern 500 that will take place at 6 p.m. on NBCSN down to Richmond Richmond Raceway they're gonna have four races in their schedule two additional races to be exact the truck series are gonna make their return to Richmond since 2005 on Thursday and then a doubleheader for the Xfinity series Friday and Saturday remember those two races the second Xfinity race and the truck series race they all had to be rescheduled to September due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Saturday still remains with the Cup Series for the second race of the playoffs all on NBCSN. On to Bristol, doubleheader on Thursday for Trucks and Arca, 7.30 and 9.30, both on FS1. By the way, the Truck Series at Bristol, that's when their playoffs begin. And then Friday, Saturday, Xfinity and the Cup Series. Now, not much real change at Las Vegas. Remains the same Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for Trucks, Xfinity, and the Cup Series. The Xfinity Series will begin their playoffs there on the Vegas Strip. And then you see Talladega. For the first time, we're going to see the Xfinity Series race there in the fall. That's right, they had to make up a race due to a previous race being canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And what better place to add an additional race than at Talladega. So we will have a doubleheader on Saturday with the Trucks and Xfinity. And then on Sunday, the Cup Series. Charlotte Roval, no change there. Saturday and Sunday, Xfinity and Cup. Kansas, no change there. The trucks on FS1 on Friday, as well as the Arca Menard Series later that night on FS2. Saturday on NBCSN. Sunday, the Cup Series on NBC. No change for Texas. Everything remains the same there. But then you look at Martinsville. Another race has been added to the Truck Series for a triple header weekend. Friday night on FS1 is the Trucks. Saturday at 4.30 on NBC. And then on Sunday, the Cup Series as well on NBC. And then we wrap up the season in Phoenix. Everything remains the same there. Trucks on Friday. Xfinity and Arca on Saturday with the championship finale at Phoenix for the Cup Series on Sunday. Now as for my reaction to this the schedule announcement, it's not really much of a surprise. Uh, to say um, I mean we, kn we knew already that with the Xfinity races uh, that have been postponed I believe it was Richmond and Mid-Ohio that had to be replaced by a second Richmond race in the fall and Talladega for the truck series they had to pre replace Canadian Tire and um, Eldora so they put Darlington and Kansas Kansas uh, uh, apparently was an addition to the schedule but I will say I am very excited for the NASCAR playoffs I think this is going to be the most ex this is the greatest I think 10 race chase for the playoffs say the 2019 2020 package might hinder the racing just a bit but you look at round of 16 Darlington Richmond and Bristol three very exciting very fun racetracks then you look at the round of 12 Vegas Talladega, the Charlotte Roval. Vegas, it can produce some really good racing. Talladega, we know how great racing that can produce with that package. Charlotte Roval, I don't think I need to say much there. Uh, the round of eight is a bit more tame with Kansas and Texas kind of ruins it, but Martinsville uh, with a triple header race weekend, Friday, uh, the Friday night with the trucks, Saturday, the Xfinity and the Cup race. In fact, this is a little nugget I just realized. Both the Xfinity and the Cup race on Martinsville are all on the big NBC network. Now that's kind of surprising because originally, all the previous Martinsville races were all on NBCSN. So it's cool to see Martinsville get some uh, get some uh, uh, big promotion or big uh, uh, audience on the big NBC network. That's good to see, but I'm excited. I'm excited for this 10 race chase. I'm really, really excited for it. Um, the only race I'm not looking forward to is Texas, but other than that, I mean, Darlington, it can produce some really fun racing. 
you know, Richmond can reduce good racing if it's, you know, without the horrendous 2019 package. Bristol, don't think I really need to say anything there. And that's a, in fact that that's a chase cutoff also. That's a playoff cutoff. That's also going to be amazing to see. Now, again, I said this up to this point. I think this is the greatest 10 race chase. We'll see what happens with the 2021 schedule. See if they can up that even more. The only thing I would do is get rid of Texas. That does not deserve a playoff date because of how horrendous they revamped that racetrack. But other than that, I'm excited. I'm really excited. So now we move on to the Choose Cone rule. NASCAR announced along with the releasing of the 2020 schedule that the Choose Cone will be making its return to the NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, and Truck Series starting this weekend at Michigan. And it will take place throughout the entire remainder of the 2020 season except for the road courses as well as the super speedways of Daytona and Talladega. Uh, the Choose Cone rule first came into effect in the All-Star Race at Bristol. A lot of fans love it. Drivers love it. I like it. I like the Choose Cone rule uh, because I do think it's unfair that, you know, with certain racetracks and how they, they're they made with the PJ1, like you get put into a lane that you don't want and you just get shuffled onto the bag. I think it would be cool to, you know, have the opportunity to take, let's say, take a gamble. You know, I talked about it in the All-Star episode a few weeks ago. Let's say there's a situation where everyone goes to the outside lane. You could take the opportunity, risk it. Screw it. Let's go to the inside lane. You move up five, six spots to the front row. Let's just say that as, as an example. Um, I think it'll create a lot of cool different strategy moves throughout the race. And I hope, because it's on NBC, they'll actually show it and talk about it. Not like what Fox did where they showed it, but if you weren't paying attention, you would not have noticed. I mean, it was sort of like, oh, hey, it's there. All right, move on. Hopefully NBC actually talks about it this time around. Now, as much as I like the choose cone rule, I do not think it's a good idea to have it take place in the middle of the season, more specifically right before the playoffs, as Brad Keselowski stated in this interview. Parts I, I really like about it. There's parts I don't so much like about it. Um, you know, I, I, I really would like to get some reps on it and then take it from there. Um, I was probably a little more hopeful that it would go to the lower series first and they could work the bugs out, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, you know, I don't know what I don't know, and that's what makes me the most nervous. And I agree. I think if you're going to have a rule like this, I think it's better to have it take place starting with the lower divisions like the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and then work your way up into the Cup Series for maybe next season. But I, again, I like the rule, but don't think you should have done it in the beginning, or I should say in the middle of the season, right before the playoffs. Now let's talk about, in my opinion, the dumbest way of creating a starting lineup. NASCAR also announced a new formula to determine the starting lineup for the remainder of the 2020 season. So before, it was just a random draw, you know, depending on where you are in owner points, I believe it was. That's how they determined the starting grid. Well, a lot of people in NASCAR and both fans, drivers, were displeased with how it was done because you had certain drivers like Jimmy Johnson who started 20th four races in a row. Clint Boyer, I think, started outside the top 20, I think, for a certain amount of races in a row. It was just unfair. And so they said, all right, you know, let's create a brand new format. Now, did they make an announcement saying that, all right, we'll do, we'll give you one qualifying lap? Did they make the announcement of, okay, fastest lap of the race by that order will determine the starting lineup for the next race? No, this is what they did. Okay, I'm very, <laughs> it's just, just very confusing. So this is how they're going to do it. They're going to set up the starting lineup based on three different uh, situations. 50% of what will be weighed goes to the finishing position from the previous race. 35% will be ranked based off of team owner points. And then the other 15% will be the fastest lap from the previous race. And that will also determine pit selection as well. If that sounds confusing, that's because it is. <laughs> I'm reading, looking at my script right now, finishing position from the previous race. So... I'm going to take a swing at this. I'm guessing they're going to create a system. So let's say if you finish 7th, okay, that goes into a 50%. If you're 16th in the owner points, that, uh, you know, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. No, this is too much math. I mean, uh, this is typical NASCAR. You take something that is so easy to fix, and then you make it so complicated like, I don't get it. I do not get it. Just one, just do a qualifying lap or do the fastest lap in the previous race and have that be it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just do that. 
I don't get it. Why Why do you have to do the 50%, the 35%, the 50 It's just too much, NASCAR. Just make it simple. Americans like things simple, okay? Stop trying to overcomplicate every single thing you guys touch. I mean, oh, God, this this... This is just this is just dumb. Again, it's just stupid. I don't understand the reasoning for this. I get it. You want to make sure that it's fair, but can you make it like? Can you make it in a way that it's easy to explain to a five-year-old? Like I'm pretty sure, even if I explain this to a ten-year-old, they're gonna look at me like I have three, three heads on. Like NASCAR, it, I get it. You want to promote, you know, performance. Make sure that it's fair. Fine. But could you do it in a way that makes it easy to explain it to a five-year-old so that the kid doesn't look at me look at me like I have three heads on or something like that? Like, I don't get it. What the fifty percent way in it? Uh, just, just do a qualifying lap, one qualifying lap before the race. Not that hard. Or do your average speed. Do it by that to ensure, make sure that you know. Let's say if a driver in twenty-fifth place gets on fresh tires with two laps to go and sets a fast lap and starts on pole. Do it based off of average speed for that driver's race, you know, and go by that order or something. There are so many easy, more simpler ways to do this than that. But that's just my thoughts about it. I think, again, this is typical NASCAR. They take something that it could be easily explained, could be easily fixed, and then they do everything about it. For example, the NASCAR playoffs. I mean, you took a very simple 36 races. Whoever has the most points at the end of the season is a champion. And then you throw in stage racing and the playoff points and this and that and everything. I mean, we understand the playoff grid now, but it, it didn't need to go this far in NASCAR. I mean, come on, do better. Okay, ran over. All right, let's move on now to our final topic regarding a driver's future at a team. We're talking about Eric Jones at JGR. With the announcement that Levi Family Racing will be shutting its doors at the end of the 2020 season, that leaves Christopher Bell without a ride. Eric Jones is on the hot seat due to him being a contract year. Now, Hamlin is also in a contract year um, or also been rumored to leave JGR, but more than likely, I don't see that happening. I really do believe, though, that it's going to be between Eric Jones and Christopher Bell. Now, this came from Reddit. I first saw this on Reddit, so take this with a very small grain of salt. But this came from a Twitter account called Mike Clay, who is verified. Now, he mostly does NFL, does football stuff, but he has, uh, he is a NASCAR fan, a motorsports fan, so, you know, and he is a reporter, so he might have some inside scoop on in the NASCAR garage. And this is what he tweeted out at 12.46 p.m. today. Breaking NASCAR news, source tells me that JGR has informed Eric Jones that his contract will not be renewed for 2021. He will be replaced in the 20 car, by Christopher Bell. Again, this is completely, this is just a rumor and might might not be real because of the fact that he took this post down. Now, he did tweet it, but kind of odd that he took it down, which leads me to think of two things. He either took it down because number one, he probably got the information wrong and maybe something completely different. So you obviously, if you're a credible reporter, if you're a reporter, you don't, don't want to put out misinformation. Or number two, he might have got the news a bit too early and, you know, he wasn't supposed to announce it as of yet. Maybe, you know, a couple of weeks later they would make the announcement and he released it way too early before a confirmed deal was set to take place. Which that I could see happening. I could see more of the fact that it, this is true, but he wasn't supposed to release it now. That's what I see happening because... I mean, it's all been speculated. Jones or Bell? Who do you pick? I would go with Bell, but it's, I don't know, it's just very complicated. But let's let's go with the route that Eric Jones is leaving JGR and Bell will take over the 20 car. I'm just saying, there is a spot at Hendrick for the 48. If this is true, this is confirmed true, that Jones is leaving JGR and Bell will take a spot, more than likely, Jones is going to end up in the 48 car. I mean, I don't see any other option for Jones to go to. I mean, there have been rumors that Denny Hamlin might go to the 48 car at the end of the season. Um, but I just don't see that happening. I think Jones is now the number one candidate for the 48 car, if I'm not mistaken. If I, I mean, before they said it was Kislowski. Well, Kislowski, he's saying at Penske. Then they said it was Bubba Wallace. But Wallace is more than likely going to go to Chip Ganassi. Um, they even had Reddick as a rumor candidate, but I think he's going to stay with uh, RCR. I really do believe that Eric Jones will be going to the 48 car, 
and Christopher Bell will be taking his place at JGR in 2021. But, uh, hey, that's just a rumor. That's just what I think is going to happen. Uh, We'll see what takes place later on in the future if this announcement is true or if this just was something that should never been brought up, if this was just misinformation. But I wanted to give this story to you guys just to let you guys know of everything that's going on in the NASCAR world. This could be completely wrong. And if it is, fine. But just want to make sure that, hey, this is what is going on. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts on that. So, that's going to conclude this episode of Inside the Lines. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. I got a lot more stuff coming for you guys in the future. What are your thoughts on any of the stories I talk about in this episode? What are your thoughts on the Choose Cone? What are your thoughts on NASCAR creating this stupid starting lineup formula? What are your thoughts on the remainder of the NASCAR schedule in 2020? And what are your thoughts on Eric Jones possibly, huge quotation marks, being replaced by Christopher Bell at JGR. But until next time, my name is Jack Cross from MDK, and I'll see you guys next time.